Hare Krishna, dear devotees. I would like to welcome you all to His Holiness Chandramali Maharaj's daily online class. Thank you all for joining today. My humble obeisances to you. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj. My uh, the boom. Glory to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. All glory to Prabhupada. My humble obeisances to you, Maharaj. Jai Ho. Can you hear me good? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Okay. We've got this speaker connected this today, first day. So see if it's an improvement from previously. Your voice is uh, and sound is very clear, Maharaj. Okay, good. And good volume? Yes. Okay. Thank you. My basis is to you and all the Vaishnavas. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Continuation of the chapter Dhritarashtra quits home. Ye Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yena Chai Vabhipano Viham. Anayar Vi. Panair priyatmair api jano sabja viyogyeta kim utanyar danadibihi. Whoever is under the influence of Supreme Kala, eternal time, must surrender his most dear life and want to speak of other things such as wealth, honor, children, land, and home. <coughs> One moment, I'll continue in a second here. Um, Prabhupada's got two bowls there. Mm -hmm. Give him something in both bowls, one in each, something from the offering. Yeah, oh, and offer it at the same time. Yeah, just put it on there. It's, sure. it's, I'll change the bowl then to, uh, to Haridas and Shiloh Prabhupada. Yeah. You might not have room for Prabhupada's bowls. It's... Yeah. But give him something like there's a savory body, sweet, like that. No rice, no dal. Yeah, savory chapati. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Either one. All three. I'll read the translation again. Sorry for the interruption. Whoever is under the influence of Supreme Kali eternal time must surrender his dear most life and want to speak of other things such as wealth, honor, children, land, and home. The great Indian scientist, busy in plan making business, was suddenly called by invincible eternal time while going to attend a very important meeting of the planning commission. And he had to surrender his life, wife, children, house, land well. During the political upsurge in India and its division into Pakistan and Hindustan, so many rich and influential Indians had to surrender life, property, and honor due to the influence of time. And there are hundreds and thousands of examples like that all over the world, all over the universe, which are all the effects of influence of time. Therefore, the conclusion is that there is no, no powerful living being within the universe who can overcome the influence of time. Many poets have written verses lamenting the influence of time. Many devastations have taken place over the universe due to the influence of time. And no one can check them by any means. Even in our daily lives, so many things come and go in which we have no hand. We have to suffer or tolerate them without remedial measure. That is the result of time.
Shri Chaitanya Maro Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Vedanti Swam Padanti Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravane Vicharine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya Deve Satarine Jaisti Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So occasionally we meet an atheist who says he doesn't believe in God and he has his arguments but we tell him you believe in time. Obviously, they cannot answer but yes. And time is the feature of the Lord, which takes away everything. And therefore, they have to surrender everything. So for the atheist and non-devotees, time is a very fearful thing, as it says here. Many poets have written verses lamenting the influence of time. The time has effects according to one's relationship with the material world. If one is still trying to enjoy this material world, then time becomes something that people want to push out of their mind. And when they're reminded, they become either silent or they say, why are you so morose <laughs> or so negative? I think that's a better word, negative. But we, we are not negative, we are realistic. <laughs> the realism is that this world is governed by the time factor. And the time factor, as it says, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am time. Time, that's me. <laughs> it's his impersonal feature. And time has many effects in the material world. It brings something like someone is born. So by the influence of time, another living entity appears in a particular situation in the material in a, in a material situation. It's called birth, and then there's growth, then there's stay, and then there's producing some byproducts, other children, and then staying for some time. And then gradually, as time goes on, one starts to feel the effects of the deterioration of the body. That's called old age, and then, of course, vanish. So in the Bhagavad Gita, one of the main subjects, there are five main subjects in the Gita, and time is one of the main subjects. It's a feature of the material energy. And it says here, we have we had so many things come and go, we have no hand. We have to either suffer or tolerate. But that's for the materialists. Here you're seeing uh, the uh, statements given by um, Vidura to his uh, older brother Dhritarashtra. He's getting right to the point. <laughs> You're going to lose everything. <laughs> so why are you hanging around? Why don't you why don't you make plans for your next appearance and make that plan plan not something in this material world. So he's the well wisher. So those who remind people of the importance of using one's time in the right way. They are called sadhus or well-wishers because they understand that this world is temporary. And temporary means temporary. So even then, sometimes they celebrate a person lived, oh, he lived a hundred years old 
or even lived a, even more than a hundred. But still, the time factor still works. It's not longevity of life that gives quality to life. It's what you achieve in life that is qualitatively understood. And so there are, as, as the Bhagavatam says, that there are trees, they live for four or 5,000 years. Some of them sequoia trees and redwood trees in California been around since the beginning of time. <laughs> not beginning of time, they've been around for thousands of years and have they seen so much. <laughs> These trees are a witness of so many civilizations coming and going. <laughs> and so, but what is the value of a tree life? It's not even close to the importance of human life, but therefore human life is not about longevity. It's about quality, what you do. And so we have many examples. We have one great saint from France. Her name was Saint Teresa. She's not so well known. Her name is Saint Teresa of Lisieux. And she had a very loving relationship with Jesus Christ. And she would call Jesus, Jesus her husband. And she put herself as the bride of Christ. She lived only 23 years, but she perfected her life in God consciousness. Prabhupada mentioned Sankaracharya lived 33 years. Jesus Christ lived 32 years. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived 48 years. All of these, we, we hear about these people because in their lives, they did so much to help others, and at the same time, they perfected their own life and spiritual consciousness. So one should not think in terms of longevity. One should think in terms of quality. What is the quality of my life? Sometimes, and it's quite common when people are young, they think, well, I'm going to live for so many more years, and therefore I have so many plans to enjoy in this material world. And you see even people who are coming from the Vedic culture, they say that also. They say, yeah, when I get old, then I'll sit down and chant Hare Krishna or I'll become more serious about God, but not now. But that is gambling. It's like there's a thing called Russian roulette. Russian roulette is, I don't know if you know about it. It's a very dangerous gambling game. Is that they play like this. It's really dangerous. They, they have a, a revolver which has six chambers in it. And in one of the chambers, there is a bullet. And then they spin the chambers and it spins around and then somebody will put the gun to their head and pull the trigger and the odds are one out of six that that will be the bullet but only a fool will play a game like that it's called Russian roulette <laughs> um, so Therefore, to waste time is like playing Russian roulette because we don't know when the last moment will come. Therefore, one has to use their time. And for a devotee, time has a different effect or a different understanding for a devotee. A devotee sees time as their friend, as rather than a fearful situation because they see that it's bringing one closer to Krishna. Therefore, one who lives to serve the Lord lives beyond time. And time is whatever time is influence has, it's simply bringing one to the spiritual world. So therefore it says that the devotee should always remember the force of time and how to use time in the best possible way. Um, in 
in the process of bhakti itself, there is one particular characteristic, is that not to waste a moment of time in something other than service to the Lord. And that's one of the features of bhava bhakti, or uh, when one reaches a certain stage of um, spiritual life, uh, for them, if someone wastes their time, or if they find themselves wasting time, they become very upset, either with the person or with themselves. And that was a feature of Srila Prabhupada. He never wasted a, mo a second. And if somebody tried to waste his time, he would, uh, you know, change the situation to utilize that time in a proper way. So, yeah, and my Prabhupada also said many times when people wanted to discuss certain things, he said, it's just a waste of time. Let's discuss something that will be relevant to our relationship with God. But time is very valuable. And Bhakti Siddhanta makes a statement. He says, money is valuable, but time is precious. Precious obviously is more sought after than something that is valuable. There are many things that are valuable, but there are a few things that are precious. And so time is one of them because m money or wealth can be lost and can be regained. But time cannot, it can only be lost. It only goes in one direction. So how a devotee uses their time is in the best way so they can fulfill the goal of life and go back home, back to Godhead. So, uh, so one of the features of the material life is that people think, well, yeah, I have so much time. Or I'm young. Devotees also, also think like that too. But we shouldn't be fooled by this uh, show of the material energy. Uh, there was one story, which I'll tell, and I think I've told it before, and maybe some of you have heard, but it's worth retelling. And we were preaching in uh, Mumbai in one hospital, JJ Medical College. Um, there was uh, a program that we had established on campus. And we were, the students were coming to our program and we were having regular programs and scheduled times. And many of the students were coming. And so we, they were taking part in Krishna consciousness. So this was going on, it was becoming quite successful. The numbers were increasing. Some of the devotee, some of the students were coming to the temple also based on the program. And then at one point, one of the students who was also quite an avid participant, he said to his colleagues who were also coming to the, that, you know, this is the last year in medical school and I wanna to graduate top honors. And so I'm not coming to any more programs. I'm going to simply concentrate fully on my studies. And he had, and there was about three months left before graduation. And so his friend said, all right, fine, but make sure you come back, you know, after. So he went and he stayed away for three months. Obviously, he studied hard because he came out first in his class. In fact, first in the whole school. He was he got the top honors. Now he's honored as the, the honor student of the entire graduation. And now his friends go to him and say, well, you know, the devotees are coming tonight. Why don't you come back to the program? You know, you said you would after graduation. He said, yeah, that's very nice. But um, tonight there's the party. And I want to go to the party. So his friends were not happy with that. But he, they couldn't change his mind. So he went to the party. And then he was dancing in the party. And he had a heart attack. And he died right on the dance floor. Everyone was shocked. <laughs> it, was, it was a great shock to the devotees and to all of the 
his fellow students, obviously, to everyone. Because the boy had uh, graduated with top honors and he had no uh, record of any previous health condition. He was never seen as a person who was having any problems in life. He was healthy. But inevitable time. It's called providence. Providence comes on its own accord. And so when this situation happens, many of his friends became really serious and became more inclined to Krishna consciousness. So this was an incident. I was personally present during that time and I had heard the story directly. So yeah, uh, this is, we can't gamble with the material energy because no one knows as Srila Prabhupada would say, um, Maharaj Parikshit, he was cursed to die in seven days, but at least he knew he had seven days to die. And so he immediately sat down on the banks of the holy river Jamuna, and he uh, heard from Sukadeva Goswami, the entire Srimad Bhagavatam became fully self-realized, in his self-realization, he became fully fearless. And then when he was bitten by that snake, it didn't faze him. He simply accepted it as the, the arrangement of the Lord and, and took the opportunity to go back to the spiritual world. And so uh, the point is that he knew he had seven days. Nobody knows if they have seven seconds. <laughs> It's the way the material world is, and especially nowadays with so many, I don't want to get into a scare program, that's not my idea, but we see that people are dying left and right nowadays from different reasons, and they're not old people either. Cancer is on the, on the upspread, and so it's a, and living in the world is padam padam ya vi padam danger at every step and the devotees are aware of that so the devotee thinks yeah i'm gonna have to leave sometime so why should i make big plans to stay here and be happy let me do what's necessary and focus fully on my practice of krishna consciousness and then that's there's a sense of satisfaction that comes with that and that makes the devotee feel happy then Whenever Krishna wants, if he wants to call me, I'm ready to go. Not like, oh, you know, Krishna, you got to give me more time. Prabhupada talks about the doctor. One man, he he was a very rich man and he had many projects going on. And so he got sick and looked like he was going to leave. So he got the best physician. And he was already, he said to the physician, my dear doctor, I will pay you much more than you're asking, but please give me four more years. I have so many plans that are unfulfilled. Prabhupada comments on it, that no doctor can give four seconds or even four, four minutes because time works under the influence of Krishna. Krishna says, time I am. And Krishna's will is absolute. And he allows the material energy to work according to all of the every, all of the energies of the Lord work according to his plan. And no one knows the plan of the Lord. We've had many great devotees in our movement all of a sudden have left the planet. Of course, many of them were ready, and others found it a surprise. But we shouldn't take a chance. Therefore, in Bhakti Tirtha Swami wrote a very, well, Beggar Four, and it's called Die Before Dying. And in that, he helps us to go through the different attachments that we may have in our present situation, which will, which are keeping us from actually uh, leaving the body because when we when the time comes to leave 
We want to be free from all material attachments and fully attached to Krishna. And then Taktva Deon Panar Janmani Naiti Mamiti Surjana. Then that soul is guaranteed to go back home, back to Godhead. So no one can beat the hands of eternal time. In fact, Lee, there was one story. Prabhupada tells these stories. It's interesting about one man. He was thinking Yamaraj, he's the Lord of Death. You know, he's a gentleman. And so I'm going to smear my body with stool all over. And he'll never come near me. He was thinking in this, this silly way. But Prabhupada comments, you know. No one can, you know, thwart the hands of death, no matter what you do. But then Prabhupada tells one story. It's interesting. It's it's kind of a classic story that's popular amongst Vedic stories. It's called Savitri Satavan. <laughs> Savitri and Satavan. It's an interesting story. Where Savitri... She was a very chaste lady, and she was praying to Yamaraj that soon I will get married, and when I do, please give me a wonderful son. This is my, and then she performed austerities, penances, and offered nice prayers to Yamaraj, praying for a nice son. Now, her husband, Satavan, they went to an astrologer. And the astrologer said to them that, unfortunately, I have some unpleasant news. Satavan will die on the wedding day. This is what I see. And of course, they were shocked. But as Prabhupada said, love is blind. And so she married him anyway. And then on the wedding day, Satavan died. So now, Yamaraj is coming to take away her husband. And it goes on, Prabhupada tells the story how he's taking away Satavan and Savitri is following behind. And Yamaraj looks behind and says, why are you following me? You're taking my husband. Yes, you can't do that. What do you mean? Well, you promised me a son. I performed prayers and penances, and you said you would give me a nice son. So without a husband, how will I get a son? And then Yamaraj thought, hmm, looks like I made a mistake. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, that's the only case in the history of existence where someone has beaten death, a chaste woman who, uh, you know, Pray to Yamaraj for a son. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but that's not a uh, that's not a, a prototype for everyone. <laughs> it may not work. It probably won't work. So one should not try to beat death by some kind of plan. One should beat death in the way that death can be beaten, and that is to become fully Krishna conscious. Then. <laughs> Then one will go, go, go home back to Godhead. And death is, is a door to, simply to eternal life. The devotees not fearful of death, but the devotees are cautious to make sure they use their time to become Krishna consciousness. And when death comes along, they can embrace death with open arms. Just like we have penned this wonderful book in honor of our dear disciple, God brother of many of you, called Janaki Nath. And the book was titled Loving Life, Embracing Death. And he wasn't fearful of death, although he knew it was coming soon. He loved life so much, and he gave everything he could while he was here. But at the same time, when it came time to leave, he was ready. And so being ready means being Krishna conscious. 
So there are many examples that devotees uh, accept the end of the body as the benediction that they're looking for so they can again, again, associate with Krishna and serve Krishna in the spiritual world where life is eternal, full of knowledge, and full of bliss. And that is our birthright to go back to the spiritual world. Okay. So here we're seeing uh, Yamaraj, who's now in the form of Vidur, preaching to his, uh, his brother, who can't understand how he's wasting his life. But soon he'll get the message. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, dear devotees, um, we'd like to open up the session for Q and A. Um, so, if you have any questions um, regarding the topic today, uh, realizations, comments, please uh, feel free to ask. We encourage you to ask uh, relevant questions. Uh, also, um, if you're not in a position to speak, you can put uh, the message in the chat window, and we will read it out on your behalf. And one last request, if you can uh, turn on your camera so we can make the session more lively, interactive and personal, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Maharaj, uh, why is the devotees uh, contemplate um, on, the, on the questions? I had a, I have a question. Uh, the last line in the purport states that we should tolerate them uh, and not find the uh, in the word is we have to suffer or tolerate them without remedial measure. So, how can we practically apply this if there is a cancer to somebody? Um, Obviously, there's a suffering that's coming in. Uh, we do things within our control to manage it. But then at what point you let it go and, and kind of tolerate it? And uh, that's uh, Ultimately, that's what you have to do. There are others. Give you a nice example. There was Kadamba Kalana Maharaj. She just recently left in around Gaur Purnima this year. And, you know, he... He understood, yeah, time is short. And people were trying to still give him, you know, suggestions for getting cured. And, you know, there are so many people out there who claim to be expert at curing everything, anything. But he understood, why should I waste time? The death notice has been given. And he just focused fully on Krishna consciousness. Maybe someone else would not have done that and thought, well, let me go to this specialist and that specialist. And there have been devotees that have done that. And some of them have been successful in finding cures. That's, I can't say it that hasn't. I know one person who, who had, who very, diligently traveled around the world looking for the doctors that he needed. But so you have to see what mindset you want to accept. So I think making a little effort, and that was there also with Kadamba Kanamaraj, he made an effort to some degree to get cured. But then when he realized uh you know, I'm just wasting my time because there's nothing in it, nothing's going to really work. And he had that experience and he just you know, got ready, prepared for his departure. So how do you know? Well, <laughs> I think you have to really be, it's just natural to want to make an effort to overcome the inevitable. But one thing you should always remember, and it was brought about by Srila Prabhupada on a one morning walk, when they were, the famous morning walk, it's called, the, the title of the particular 
the lecture. It wasn't a lecture, it was a morning walk. It was called World War Three. And Prabhupada was talking, and the devotees were talking about death. And Prabhupada said, whether you die now or 20 years from now, you're still going to die. You can't stop death, that's for sure. That's the point. But if you want to postpone it, you may be able to do that if you need to in order to become fully Krishna conscious. So it's just natural that the devotee will look for some kind of cure or some remedy if they have something. But at one point, you learn, hey, all the time, energy, resources I'm using may be just a waste of time. Let me use my time to leave the body in the proper consciousness rather than spending time trying to keep this body going. So that's a decision. And it requires some intelligence and also some uh, some consultation with others. But generally, if we put too much emphasis and become fearful of death and do everything we can to stop it, then we're in an illusion because we're just wasting time. But it's natural to want to continue in one's presence existence. It's just natural. Thank you, Maharaj. It's uh, it was a lot of surrender and, and a lot of faith to be able to execute that. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Any uh, question? Any question? Okay. I got a question from the local, the local group here, which is a a assembly of one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj, when, uh, when we are really sick and we are not able to walk uh, or like, do any service and devotees are just serving us just so that we kind of survive, is it immoral to kind of fast, uh, like just kind of go meditation on Krishna and fast until that? It's, uh, the question is somewhat related to a situation that may occur when when one is very sick and they're simply overly dependent on others and they can't do anything. So they just fast to death and then make it easier on everybody and on themselves. No, because when, if devotees are serving you, then they get some benefit from that. And you should leave death in the hands of God not that you should try to accelerate it or you should try to prevent it. Just go on with your Krishna consciousness. That's the most important thing. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. As Krishna says, I am death. He's not just saying that, he is. <laughs> he is the source of life. That is, we are, we're, we're given our existence by Krishna. Of course, our existence is sim comes simultaneously because we are not these bodies. But, but the body just leaves everything in the hands of the Lord and goes on. We live a life in order to prevent ourselves from harm's way. You don't put yourself in harm's way automatically. You try to live, per, you know, to preserve life in this body. You want to do that. So you can use as much time as you can to be fully Krishna conscious. But then if something happens and it becomes clear, and why should I continue? Let me just uh, 
focus my attention on Krishna like that. So it's an individual thing. But generally, devotees have faith that Krishna is there. We don't seem to get any questions for this topic. This is the third day in a row this topic came up, and every day there's no questions. I have a, a question in relation to um, time, in the sense that when time is not on our side um, and things doesn't go um, according to what we want or, or favorably, uh, should we? Under normal situation, not in an emergency uh, situation, but in the normal situations of life, should you compromise uh, your normal morals, ethics, to uh, and your etiquette to make things go your way if you had the chance to do that? I'm just, I'm just, uh, yes, very much. Yeah, that's devil's advocate question, huh? Mm -hmm. Because I'm remembering this uh, incident from the Samudra Manthan, uh, the churning of the milk ocean, where the Lord advises the demigods that time is not on your side at the moment, so you should better make friendships and wait for a favorable time. So the demigods, who would normally not associate with uh, the demons, uh, did that to wait for the favorable time. That's a strategy, yeah. Yeah. Well, Krishna gave a lot of strat. Krishna gave strategies to Arjuna how to how to you know deal with Bhishma. And Krishna always helps his devotee to strategize, but but it's not breaking moral or religious principles. Krishna will never tell you to to you know break religious principles in order to be to to extend to fulfill your plans ah uh, but of course he did that with uh, karna when uh, arjuna was fighting with karna and uh, it was a good fight, and Arjuna knocked Karna's chariot down and broke. No, it actually got stuck in the mud. So Karna got down to fix, pull his chariot out of the mud, and he said to Arjuna, you know, uh, don't kill me now, I'm fixing my chariot. And that's the codes of Kshatriya, that if someone is not fighting, you can't kill them. If someone is underarmed, you have to supply the same weapons. If someone is scared, you can't kill them. These are all Kshatriya codes. Everything is done equally. But Krishna said to Arjuna, kill him. <laughs> and Krishna had a reason for that because Karna committed so many offenses. He committed offenses against Draupadi very strongly and against the Pandavas. So Krishna didn't appreciate that. So therefore Karna wasn't played fairly and Krishna gave that command and Arjuna followed it. Now when Krishna told uh, Yudhisthira that there was no way to, to actually kill Dronacharya, Dronacharya was powerful. So Dronacharya was very attached to Asvatthama, his son. So Krishna told uh, Yudhisthira to tell Dronacharya that Asvatthama is killed, which wasn't true. And, uh, and Yudhisthira didn't want to do that because everyone knew Yudhisthira never told a lie. He was considered, Dhar he was considered Dharmaraj. Truth personified. He would never lie. But Krishna is now telling him to lie. <laughs> and so, yeah, but he 
he protested against Krishna. And because he didn't obey Krishna, Prabhupada said he had to see how. That was Prabhupada. I just heard that just two days ago, Prabhupada was speaking on it and he said, Yudhisthira, because he refused to tell a lie, he had to see how. And Krishna told him, you lie. And that was the only way that Dronacharya could be killed, that when he lost his morality and his all his enthusiasm to fight, and then it was easy to kill Dronacharya then. Otherwise, he, he was invincible, even against Arjuna. So Krishna did everything to make sure the Pandavas won. <laughs> And therefore, he also broke, apparently broke religious principles. But then again, you can't say that because religious principles are created by Krishna. So he is standard of morality. If he says something different, then that becomes the religious principle. But we can't do that. Baba was just talking today. He says that if Krishna tells you to kill your guru, you have to kill your guru. I'm just listening to it today. And then he's going on saying that because that was the situation with uh, Arjuna who failed to fight. He didn't want to fight. How can we kill our, you know, our well-wishers, our gurus are on the other side. There's Bhishma, there's Drona. And he wasn't going to fight. But Krishna said, you, you know, you got to fight. You got to kill your own guru. But then Prabhupada qualified that. He said, Krishna will not tell you to kill your guru. <laughs> you can't expect him to go around saying that. He won't. But if in this situation, during this battle, because they were avaricious, they were on the wrong side. Because they were on the wrong side, Krishna said, kill him. So Krishna re, re, he regave the standard of morality, that the morality means whatever I say. <laughs> whatever I say is religious principles. But generally, we follow religious principles. We can't think, we can't say, well, Krishna told me to kill my guru. No, you can't say that. So Prabhupada's talking about it. If you want to hear the lecture, I just wrote it down. Was, I found it so interesting. I made a note out of it. It's uh, it's London, nineteen seventy three. London, let me see. London, nineteen seventy three. Bhagavad Gita, chapter two, verse number three. Uh, August fifth, nineteen seventy three. London, two point three. Interesting lecture. Well, Prabhupada's giving the principle that whatever Krishna says, that's morality. And even if one wants to go against Krishna based on moral principles, then that's immorality. Just like Yudhisthira. He didn't want to lie. But Krishna said, to tell Zronachari, Asvatam has been killed. And it wasn't true. So there was an elephant whose name was Asvatam. So they killed the elephant. So when, when Yudhisthira said it, he said, Asvatam, the elephant is killed. So he, he, he didn't want to lie, but Prabhupada said because he didn't want to lie, because he went against Krishna, he had to see how. So we follow 
scripture, we follow guru, we follow the principles, we follow the standards, and that is the way we live, and that is dharma. But there are certain situations that may appear where something else is given. But that's rare. It's not the standard. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Sridhi Mataji, you have a question? Please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance of Lord Shri Prabhupada. Um, yes, Maharaj, um, I, this is a reality, but um, it's a very delicate subject. Um, that's why um, it's very hard to <laughs> and, and digest these things. Um, yeah, but uh, I have a question like, um, we know that uh, death eventually comes um, at a particular point and, and Krishna fixes it particular time for each and every one. And, but is it that the lifestyle which, um, which uh, decides or determines the end point, Guru Maharaj, like how we live uh, throughout all our life and uh, what type of karma we do, um, all that also will be there, right, Maharaj? That, that's, that's part of it, but that's not... That's not the feature. When you're under, when you're under in devotional service, you're under the care of Krishna. If Krishna wants to extend your life, he can. If Krishna wants to take you back next moment, he can. So all these other things are secondary. They have some effect, but if, if Krishna wants, then things change. So yeah. Therefore, we depend on Krishna, not about our good karma or our whatever. These are called fallible soldiers. These things can change also. I mean, there are people who have died and then come back to life within maybe a day or so. They actually died. They've been clinically pronounced as dead, but then they come back because Krishna wanted to give them more time so they can uh, finish out their life for whatever reason. You can't depend on your karma. Depend on Krishna. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. But uh, th those people who are not worshipping Krishna or who are not devotees of Krishna, what about them, Maybe also they're more under the influence of their karma mm. because just like there are women it's quite it's not common but it happens a lot is that many women die at childbirth because giving birth sometimes is so severe that the pain causes the women to die actually so I met a lady she died seven times she she wrote a book about it too. I talked to her personally, and yeah, she died seven times. And uh, she no, I'm sorry, she died three times, not seven, three different times at childbirth. But she was explaining that this this is called near death experience. That's how the karmis categorize it. They leave their body. They go into their subtle consciousness and they go into a tunnel and they see different beings there. Some of them are beings of light. Some of them are, are horrible looking personalities, depending on their karma. And sometimes these beings will give them more time. So based on higher powers, they are pushed back into their body so they can have a chance to perfect their life. And some of them, many of them come to spiritual life after that. So sometimes Krishna will allow that to happen because to give them more time so they can perfect their life and become Krishna conscious. But that depends on Krishna. If he wants to do that, he can do that. 
So there's no particular set thing. It's individual. But for the non-devotees, you know, people die during an operation. They actually leave their body during the operation because the operations are so severe. Many times people watch their own operation from a different place in the in the operating room. They can actually see themselves being operated on. No. So the subtle body jumps out of the gross body and carries the soul with it. And so sometimes the soul, that subtle body will again re-enter the gross body. And sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. So, Guru Maharaj, um, then why the suffering? Like, um, they, they suffer like um, before death, uh, so many days they will be on bed and um, they can't uh, um, they can't get up or wake up or speak or not need properly. So, what is this suffering? Well, suffering at the time of death is burning off some of their bad karma. If you, some people, just like some devotees, when they're suffering at the time of death, they don't want any drugs because they know the drugs numb the pain and therefore they can't, they can't burn off some of that residual reactions that are still there. So devotees won't take drugs. They'll just undergo the suffering because it's purifying. Mm -hmm. It gets rid of some of their bad karma. Because when you suffer, you're, you're cashing in on your bad karma. And when you enjoy materially, you're cashing in on your good karma. It's like it's like the cash in program. <laughs> but a devotee who's fixed in Krishna consciousness is not under karma. They're under Krishna completely. Yes. And sometimes sometimes they give they get a little suffering, but that's suffering is not karma. It's simply Krishna's giving them a little reminder or some message that they need to hear to they need to learn maybe they're acting wrongly so krishna is giving them a little suffering to wake them up mm. and that's not karma yeah it's all in krishna's hands yeah if you continue on that mood then you're and Krishna is a good, he's all good. Mm. So we always take care, we have to take care. And that's the, that's the business, we take care. But ultimately, there'll be a point where, you know, the time is up. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you have to be ready. If you're not ready, then it's, if you're feeling fearful, that means you're not ready yet. Mm -hmm. You have to get ready. <laughs> That's the program. Getting ready for that time. <laughs> and that means falling in love with Krishna. <laughs> That's what you got to do. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, this uh, topic is a little bit always uh, confusing for me. Uh, like, uh, that's why. For everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's the third show. This is the third class in a row. I got no questions practically. <laughs> and tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow is the same topic. <laughs> so stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Just read the verse and you can get prepared for it. Sure, Maharaj. Sure, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah. Maharaj, we have a 
I know we're six minutes above. Can we take more questions? Uh, yeah. If, okay. Yeah, of course. We have a question uh, in the chat. Um, it says, uh, so we need to develop the quality of tolerance um, and to what extent one should be tolerant because the great realized souls are fully realized and they don't have false ego. But for a general devotee who are conditions we have and the ego is touched. So it, it's best to be always honest without exaggerating into false tolerance or letting your emotions run wild. How can we train healthy tolerance and are there any examples of this? Tolerance means to, in this case, you just accept the, that this is what's happening. <laughs> some people, when some suffering comes, they say, why me? Why is it happening to me? Sometimes they blame God. So just like if a person gets a notice, there is, a, it's called, one. there was one book that was written. It's called The Road Less Traveled. The Road Less Travel, really a good book. Devotees read it. And about a person who gets sick and how the, and he gets the notice of terminal cancer. In other words, he's gonna die. So the first reaction is denial. Just, it's not, you know, it, it can't be happening to me, it's just denial. So then they go through the denial stage. And then the second stage is that they, and then it is, why me? <laughs> why is it happening to me? First, they deny it. Second, that they can't accept that fact that it's true. And they say, why me? No, they don't, they, they accept that it's happening. And then they say, well, why me? <laughs> and then, and that's the next stage they go through. And then in Latin, the next stage is anger. They become angry at the situation. And then after they get the, through the anger stage, they realize that it's happening. It's going to happen very soon. They somewhat come to terms that, yes, let me get ready. They come, with, they come to peace within themselves. <clears throat> and they accept it. And then once they accept it, then their mind is peaceful. And they just prepare to go, that's all. So that book, if you want to, it's called The Road Less Traveled. I, I don't know who wrote it, but you don't have to worry about reading the book. All you have to do is, this is how people react, especially in the material world. Devotees don't get angry or say, why me? They just say, well, because when death comes, it's always too soon. It's always too soon. That's how the conditioned soul thinks. Yeah, I understand I'm going to die, but not now. <laughs> so the idea is it's just too soon. So this too soon attitude is also part of that experience of accepting it. Mm -hmm. One should be cautious to act in such a way that they don't waste time and also take care that they keep good health so they can live as long as possible so they can fulfill the, the time allotted so they can become pre fully Krishna conscious. But Prabhupada always encouraged the devotees to take care of health. We shouldn't neglect the health in the name that, well, I'm going to die, so what the heck, what's the use of taking care of my health? No, that, that, that's a wrong, that's not a right attitude either. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. And Sukhava had, had her hand up. Yes, Mother, you go and ask your question. <laughs> Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to assembled devotees. 
Uh, actually, you answered my question, which I was going to ask by <laughs> describing that book. I was going to ask you how to prepare because it is really hard when it hits you. It is very difficult. Uh, till now, we can say, oh, yeah, we are doing good. We are doing good. We will be fine. We can go when we are cold. But actually, when you come to know that, no, this is your time, I think it is hard for I think yeah. it, I'm thinking about myself. I find I will find it hard. But you you show like when you discuss and explain that book, it does make sense that yeah, eventually we will accept it. You have to, otherwise you can't prepare for it. Hmm. You're still fighting on the emotional level and you're not doing what you should be doing, preparing. Hmm. Yeah. Because of my profession, I see so many people and then, you know, when you see them, then you feel, what will happen to me when the time comes, so. Yeah, but keep Krishna in the front and then mm -hmm. Maya stays behind. Yeah. So for a pure devotee, when one dies, there's no time between the time they leave the body and the time that they enter the spiritual world. It's instantaneous, simultaneous, you might say. That's for a pure devotee. So become a pure devotee. Everyone mm -hmm. has the capacity to become a pure devotee. Best to improve on the sadhana is an improvement. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in the association of devotees is mm -hmm. the means which we develop our, our attraction for Krishna more. Mm -hmm. And knowledge of Krishna also. Krishna doesn't make a mistake. <laughs> true. Very true. Yeah. And that's, that's a very important thing to remember because then when the time comes and you're ready, oh yes, this is Krishna's will. Mm -hmm. But as we mentioned earlier in the discussions, if you can somehow or other prolong your life through medical care, then you should try that, but don't don't make it a feature that you waste time traveling all over the world. You know, make a little effort in that direction. Because that's just natural. Mm -hmm. You see if it, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sukhava, she's always smiling no matter what she talks about. <laughs> <laughs> She's very happy by nature. <laughs> Thank you so much. Prema Bhakti. Go ahead and ask your question. I'm still here. Question, go ahead, ask your question. You're on mute, Prabhuji. Unmute. My apologies, sorry, Prabhuji. <laughs> Maraji still oh, there. Oh, there. I'm here, I can hear you. Please accept my humble basis is Maraj. Oh, glory to Srila Prabhupada. Oh, glory to you. So, Maraj, my question is quite simply. We've got one life. Let's give it to Krishna. <laughs> It'll waste no time. Yeah, you might not have that chance again. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> if you give it to Krishna, you're giving it. You're giving it. You're doing the best thing for yourself. Life is Krishna. We have no life without him anyway. <laughs> so 
Mm. Yeah, well, one thing that brought my uh, these these questions up about time is the you know when when there was war, the atom bomb was created, and that caused you know time to move forward. <laughs> Everyone died because the scientists mingling with time, trying to create these. This time. Yeah, that's the feature of Kali Yuga. Mm. Prabhupada writes, you know, he says, the modern demons are the scientists. <laughs> mm. uh, Not all of them, but majority. We were discussing that yesterday with some devotees, and they're they're being they're being programmed by higher powers to create things that are destructive. Mm. People in general. If they don't do that, they have no job. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yes. Thank you, Guru Dave, Hare Krishna. Yeah, so we have to be very cautious on how to live in this age because there's so many things that this modern civilization has invented to accelerate death. <laughs> The food we eat, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the atmosphere we live in, all, all very detrimental to one's health. Thank you, Raj. Hare Krishna. Okay, uh, uh, Dean and Ath, I think we can. Thank you, Maharaj, for the class. Panchakalpata Rubyas Chakrapa, Sindhu Bia Eva Chapatitanam, Pavani Bio, Vaishnavi Bio, Namuna Maha, Grantra Shriman Bhagavatam Ki, Shila Prabhupad Ki, Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vindhi Ki, Jai. Gaur Primanande, Hari 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 Bo. Rojivan Ki, Jai. Swami Chik Ki, Jai. Oh, bye.